conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. Uh, today we will be discussing about hydronephrosis or obstructive neuropathy. So I think I am audible. Am I audible clearly? Okay. So yesterday, as we discussed uh, renal calliculi, right? We discussed renal calliculi. So now I will be discussing about hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis, which is a complication of renal calliculi. So hydronephrosis is the term used to describe dilation of the renal pelvis and calluses associated with progressive atrophy due to obstruction to the outflow of urine. See here, dilation of the renal pelvis and calluses, okay, which leads to cortical atrophy because of an obstruction in the outflow of urine, okay. So there are plenty of causes, congenital, as you already all the causes should be divided into congenital, inflammatory, inherited, acquired, right? So congenital anomalies, urinary calculate, as we discussed earlier, benign prostatic hypertrophy, tumors like carcinoma, prostate, bladder, cervix, or uterus, inflammations including prostatitis, urethritis, urethritis, retroperitoneal fibrosis, sloughed papillae or blood clots, pregnancy, uterine prolapse or cystosis, and functional disorders. Okay, you can remember these causes like the place of the obstruction, right? Either at uh, the prostate or the bladder or the ureter or the kidney, okay? Renal pelvis, okay? Remember like this. Or completely extra renal, like pregnancy, okay? Or retroperitoneal fibrosis, okay? Completely extra renal, arena. In the renal, at the site, okay? Either at the pelvic ulcer junction, right? Or the ureters or the bladder or urethra okay so you can remember these causes at the side depending upon the side the in, uh, initially either the uterus or the bladder or calcis will be dilated okay so what is the pathogenesis as i already said there will be obstruction to the outflow right which leads to dilation of the calcis right and cortical atrophy how does this occur okay outflow obstruction so uh, even at the outflow obstruction, there will be GFR, right? Uh, their their uh, kidneys do their own function, right? Filtering the blood, okay? So, this leads to uh, the filtered GFR will be circulated back into the lymphatics, will be uh, absorbed by the lymphatics, okay? So, and that lead to pressure uh, accumulation. This leading to calluses dilated, okay? The high pressure in the pelvis is transmitted back into the cortex. So that leads to renal atrophy. Okay. Outflow will be obstructed. But there will be continued filtration of the by the kidneys. So this leads to the high pressure, accumulation of pressure. This pressure is backfired into the cortex again, leading to atrophy. Okay. Or the affected dilated, dilated pelvises or calluses are there, right? So, this leads to compression of the renal vasculature. So, renal vasculature compression leads to functional defects, medullary functional defects. So, this leads to decreased concentrating ability of the kidneys, okay? Finally, leading to GFR decrease, okay? We all know uh, kidneys filter the blood through the concentration gradient or the vasculature gradient, right? Va concentration gradient. Concentration is maintained by the blood vessels, right? When there is obstruction in the flow, there will be dilated calluses, which leads to compression of the blood vessels. So, there is compression, uh, failure in the blood vessels, right? So, there will be failure in the gradient. So, vascular uh, gradient. So, filtrating ability or concentrating ability is reduced by the kidneys, leading to decreased GFR. Obstruction also leads to interstitial inflammatory reaction leading to interstitial fibrosis. 
depending upon the level of the block, the radiation may affect bladder process or ureter or directly the kidneys. As I already said, uh, divide the causes into the site, okay, into the site of obstruction, either in the kidneys or in the ureter or in the bladder or in the ureter. Depending upon the site also, the liver, uh, the affected organs, like first, the or the ureter or the kidneys, okay. So, as we discussed the pathology, we can now move on to more quality. So, there are two mechanisms, like subtotal complete and sudden and complete, okay, subtotal or intermittent. Had a complete obstruction may not give time for the kidney to undergo all these pathogenesis. Okay, so mild dilation of pelvis and calyx, and sometimes mild atrophy. Okay, so there is no time for the kidney to undergo atrophy or to undergo uh, maximal dilation. Okay, subtotal or intermittent progressive dilation will be there. Leading to hydronephrosis, and there is marked cortical atrophy in these cases. The kidney is slightly to massively enlarged. Okay, early features include simple dilation of pelvis and calyces with significant interstitial inflammation. Chronic cases, cortical tubular atrophy with marked diffuse interstitial fibrosis. Cortical tubular atrophy leads to decrease in concentrating ability of the kidneys. Okay leading progressive blunting leading to cupping of pyramids okay in advanced cases there will be the kidney will be thin wall cystic structure lying to parenchyma atrophy obliteration of pyramids and thinned out pocket see coming again i know i want to revise you again sudden and complete obstruction there won't be any time so there will be mild dilation of the pelvis and calyces and sometimes little atrophy okay subtotal or intermittent this gives ample amount of time to the kidney to undergo these changes like dilation cortical atrophy interstitial fibrosis all you can see in subtotal or intermittent this is a chronic course okay so the kidney is slightly to massively enlarged and these features include simple dilation of the pelvis and calyces with significant interstitial inflammation okay and chronic cases Cortical tubular atrophy with marked diffuse interstitial fibrosis. So, this leads to decrease in concentrating ability of the kidneys, leading to decreased GFR and finally cortical atrophy. Okay. Progressive blunting leading to cupping of pyramids. And advanced cases, kidney becomes thin wall, cystic structure with parenchymal atrophy, obliteration of pyramid, and thinned out cortex. You all know normal kidney consists of cortex, medulla, pyramid, calyces, pelvis, and ureter, right? But now this kidney will be like this. See here. This is completely cupped out pyramid. This is a chronic case. This is called a hydronephrosis. Okay. Thinned out cortex. See, there is no remaining kidney. So the cortex is completely atrophied, thinned out. Okay. The pathology, as I already said, outflow obstruction. Okay, outflow obstruction leading to all this. So, this is the thinned out renal parenchyma or cortex. See here. Okay, these are cystic spaces. What are these cystic spaces? Is nothing but in the normal kidney, you see pyramids, right? These are nothing but these pyramids, cup pyramids. Okay, cup pyramids. So, this is all. Pelvic alveolar system, which is very much dilated because of the obstruction, there will be dilation of the pelvic alveolar system, right? This is all dilated pelvic alveolar system. So, see here, this is single cortex, cup, pyramids, and dilated pelvic alveolar system. Okay? I think I am very clear. Coming to more for pathogenesis again. There will be outflow obstruction. Even when the obstruction is present, the kidney continues to work. So there will be GFR, right? But due to obstruction, there will be affected dilated calyces and pelvises, right? 
due to this continued GFR, there will be accumulation of pressure, right? This high pressure in the pelvis is transmitted back into the cortex through the collecting ducts, okay? So then leading to cortical atrophy or renal atrophy, okay? So due to obstruction, there will be dilation of pelvis and calcium. This leads to compression of the renal vasculature. As we all know, renal vasculature plays an important role in the filtration, right? Because it maintains a concentration gradient, okay? So, concentration gradient in the medulla, okay? So, this compression leads to medullary functional defects. Further, finally leading to decreasing concentrating ability of the people, leading to decreasing GFR. So, this obstruction also leads to interstitial inflammatory reaction leading to interstitial fibrosis. Okay. This is the morphology. Atrophied renal parenchyma, cuppet pyramids, and dilated pelvic alveolar system. Okay. The kidney is completely transformed into a cystic space. Okay. In the chronic cases, there will be cortical tubular atrophy with marked decreased interstitial fibrosis, progressive blunting leading to cupping of pyramid, advanced cases completely involved cystic structure with parenchymal atrophy, obliteration of pyramid, and thinned out cortex. <coughs> thinned out cortex, cupped pyramids, atrophied renal parenchyma, dilated pelvic alveoli. Thank you. Any doubt? Do you have any doubt? I think I am clear. Anyone having any doubt? Thank you.